When Francis, a wealthy restaurant owner, observes a young dishwasher spending time in the locker room, he becomes suspicious of her involvement in theft. He publicly humiliates her and decides to inspect her bag, only to later regret his actions upon discovering its contents. Francis was a wealthy widower in his early 50s who considered himself smart and charming. He despised those who called him bald and pot-belly man behind his back. Francis thought he could easily hit on any young and beautiful woman. He never grew tired of flirting, not that he was a full-time flirt, but he never missed a chance whenever he saw gorgeous young ladies. For Francis, age was just a number, and it wouldn't stop him from unleashing his pickup lines and directing his steamy stares toward women, including the waitresses and dishwashers who worked in his restaurant. Among them was 20-year-old Jessica. Jessica was pretty new at the restaurant. She'd been working as a dishwasher for a month. She was a poor widow who had recently lost her husband, the love of her life, Mason. She struggled to make ends meet after the tragedy and came across a We Are Hiring sign word outside Francis' eatery. She applied as a dishwasher and immediately started working with all of her diligence and dedication. Her co-workers warned her about their boss's attitude towards the female staff. That man likes to flirt and has even invited some on dates. He thinks money can buy anything, one of them said. Jessica shrugged it off. She was focused on keeping her job at any cost. I know my boundaries, she said confidently. But one day, she witnessed the ugly side of her boss. Do you have any idea why I hired you, Miss Jessica? Francis had blocked her way as she was leaving at the end of her shift. He grabbed a red rose from a table nearby. No, sir. Please excuse me. I have to get home soon. Don't call me Sir Miss Jessica. Call me Tom. Jessica felt helpless and trapped because she was the last to leave the eatery. She had a lot of dishes to do that day. It's getting late. I have to go. Good day, sir. But Francis wouldn't budge. I was blinded by your beauty the first day I saw you, he said cheesily. I can sing praises of your beautiful smile all day. What do you think? We can go to a resort, have plenty of drinks, and shop for everything you want. Annoyed, Jessica gently pushed Francis out of her way and stormed out, saying, I'm here to work, sir. I'm not here for anything other than my job, and I respect my workplace. Thank you, but I'm not the type you're looking for. Good day, sir. Francis was furious. His ego hurt. She is, after all, an ordinary dishwasher. How dare she turn down my offer? Wait until I show you what I'm capable of. Days passed, but Francis hadn't gotten over what had happened. He was not ready to accept defeat or rejection. He kept looking for a way to humiliate Jessica. One day, he saw her arrive at work with a big bag and walk into the staff room. An evil plan flashed into Francis' mind and he waited for the next few days to make sure Jessica carried this bag every day to work. He often checked on Jessica and saw her frequenting the locker room during her shift. This suspicions brewed, and he waited until the afternoon when the eatery was busy to pounce on her. Have a nice day. I have to go to the market. I took half a day off, Jessica said to her friends. Just as she was about to exit the door, Francis called out loud. Wait right there, Miss Jessica. What have you got in your bag today? Have you been stealing leftovers and dishwashing liquid? You're fired. Jessica was startled. She turned around and started to sweat in fear. The guest stared back at her and began whispering things. Her co-workers assembled behind Francis and were equally shocked. I know you've been stealing from me. I saw you frequent the locker room at least thrice during your shift. Come here. Give me your bag. Let me see what's inside. Jessica was frightened. She wanted to step back and run. It's nothing, sir. I just have my lunchbox and a set of spare clothes in it. But Francis hurried to her and snatched the bag from her hand. It was heavier than he thought. Some curious guests and staff flocked around Jessica and Francis as he put the bag on a table and took out a little blanket from it. Oh my God, what is this? He exclaimed as the rest gaped in shock. A newborn baby girl wriggled inside the bag, staring back at Francis with big brown eyes. He was stunned. Sir, I can explain, began Jessica. My husband died a few months ago when I was pregnant. After my baby came, I could not find work, and I had nobody to look after her when I joined here. I could not leave her alone at home, so I hid her in the bag and carried her to work. I frequented the staff to feed her and make sure she never made any noise. I was just protecting my baby. I'm not a thief. I didn't take a crumb from here. 
Francis was moved to tears as the baby reminded him of the child he had lost way back. That day, he cried like a kid in front of everyone, exposing a side of him that nobody knew. Francis folded his palms and immediately apologized to Jessica. I'm sorry, Miss Jessica. I lost my wife and child in an accident many years ago. I remained single after that because I feared losing my loved ones again. I never found true love after that. My loneliness turned me into a monster. I'm not bad at heart, but it's just that I lived with the assumption that money could buy anything, even love. I was wrong. Jessica was teary-eyed after learning Francis's story. Sir, I'm sorry for what you went through after losing your family. I'm glad you realized your mistake, at least now. Francis returned the bag with the baby to Jessica. You may return to work after a month. I'm giving you paid leave so that you can spend time with your child. Jessica smiled, and she left the eatery with her baby. Francis planned to give Jessica more money when she came back to work so she could afford a babysitter for her child. But did he stop trying to make romantic advances after that? Well, it turns out some of his old behaviors were tough to change. He stopped flirting with his female employees, but he still flirted with other women he met randomly. We'll have to wait and see if Francis can find true love in the future. Everyone, including Jessica, is happy that he learned that money isn't the most important thing.